very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you for joining us on our quarter two FY24 call. Uh, the call is being chaired by Dr. Ashutosh Raghuvanshi, our managing director and CEO. With him, we have Mr. Vivek Goel, our chief financial officer, and I also have with me my colleagues uh, from Investor Relations and MA, Amit, as well as Avinash. Uh, before uh, we start the call, I would just like to state that, uh, as you are all aware, uh, we are a listed company and uh, our material subsidiary, as well as diagnostics has filed a DRHP for a proposed IPO in September uh, 2023. In light of the publicity restrictions imposed on HLS and the company, which is FHL, due to the proposed IPO, no further information other than that already contained in our investor presentation and press release can be shared. Given these restrictions, we would also not be in a position to clarify or answer any questions on the diagnostics business performance or on the proposed IPO at this point in time. Uh, we do appreciate your understanding on this. Uh, we should begin uh, the, the call with some opening comments by Dr. Raghuvanshi on the consolidated and the hospital business performance, and then we can open the floor for question and answers. Over to Dr. Raghuvanshi. Thank you very much, Anurag. Uh, a very good evening to everyone. Thank you for joining us at this late hour for our Q224 <coughs> earnings call. I extend my warm greetings to you for this festive season. I would like to straight away talk on about the performance of the company in the quarter and the six months ended in September 30th, 2023. We have witnessed a strong set of earnings for the quarter. Our consolidated revenues have increased 10.1% versus Q2 of financial year 23. Uh, to INR 1,770 crores. Our consolidated operating EBITDA for the quarter was at INR 330 crores compared to INR 303 crores in Q2 of financial year 23 and 273 crores in Q1 of financial year 24. Consolidated operating EBITDA margin was at 18.6% versus 18.8% in Q2 of financial year 23 and better than 165 in quarter 1 of financial year 24. At the PAT level, we reported a profit after tax prior to exceptional items of Rs. 180 crores compared to 167 crores in Q2 of financial year 23. This is approximately 8% growth versus the corresponding quarter and 47% growth versus Q1 of financial year 24. Reported PAT stood at INR 184 crore versus INR 218 crore in the corresponding previous year. On the balance sheet, we remain quite healthy with a net debt to EBITDA ratio of 0.29x versus 0.44x at the end of quarter two of financial year 23. Our net debt stands at INR 393 crores as on September 30th, 2023, and our debt equity mix allows us the flexibility to leverage our balance sheet to further our growth objectives. Let me now also briefly touch on the consolidated H1 financial year 24 financial numbers of the company. For the H1, our consolidated revenue stood at INR 3,427 crores, a growth of 10.7% over the corresponding previous period. Operating EBITDA for the period was INR 603 crores versus INR 554 crores for the H1 in financial year 23. Translating into a margin of 17.6% versus 17.9% in the corresponding previous period. PAT, excluding exceptional items for the period, stood at INR 303 crores versus INR 301 crore for H1 of financial year 23. Uh, it has been relatively flat a year on year. Reported PAT stood at INR 308 crore versus 
and uh, 353 crores in the corresponding previous year. I'm very pleased with the way the hospital business has performed. Our hospital business revenue has grown 12% versus Q2 of financial year 23 and 7.3% versus Q1 of financial year 24. On the profitability metrics, our hospital business operating EBITDA stands at INR 268 crores, an increase of 13.1% and reflecting margins of 18.4% versus 18.2% in Q2 of financial year 23 and 15.2% in Q1 of financial year 24. The improvement in margin is attributed to a healthy performance of all the key of hospital operating metrics, which I shall speak of in a while. To highlight the contributions of the hospital operating EBITDA to our total consolidated EBITDA increase to 81% in Q2 of financial year 24 versus 78% in Q2 of financial year 23. This indicates the positive momentum in our hospital business earnings, allowing us to sustain our overall profit margins. On the international patient business, we continue to witness strong traction. International patient revenue were at INR 127 crores, a growth of 15.6% over the corresponding quarter and 10.6% over the trailing quarter. International patient revenue during Q2 of financial year 23 contributed 8.3% of total hospital revenue versus 8% in Q2 of financial year 23 and Q1 of financial year 24. The revenue contribution from the company's key medical specialities uh, in oncology, orthopedics, renal sciences, cardiac sciences, neurosciences, and gastroenterology to overall hospital revenues increased to 61.2% in Q2 of financial year 24 from 60.5% in Q2 of financial year 23. Revenue from gastro sciences, oncology, and renal sciences grew in excess of 20% versus the corresponding previous quarter. All of the above factors contributed to a healthy increase of 11.8% in our form to INR 2.21 crores from INR 1.97 crores in Q2 of financial year 23. Uh, occupancy stood at 68.7% versus 69.6% in Q2 of financial year 23 and 63.7% in Q1 of financial year 24. On our brownfield expansions, which we have been discussing with you, we remain on track to add approximately 250 beds to our network in the current financial year across the facilities such as Mulun, Anandpur in Kolkata and BG Road in Bangalore and Ludhiana. With the total planned addition of close to 1,400 beds in the next three to four years, further augmenting our bed expansion plans in Delhi NCR and Punjab clusters. We are also evaluating new opportunities, including optimizing the currently available space in our additional beds in Mohali and Chalimarbagh, and we have, uh, our board has approved the extension of these projects as well. So the beds which are going to come from Mohali are going to be uh, another 400 beds in addition to the beds which we have said earlier. On the digital transformation front, we continue with our efforts to implement EMR solutions uh, that will form a platform to integrate our SIS. The rollout of such an EMR system is currently underway. My focus app and other applications are also being bolstered and that this would increase the, enable us to digitize the patient journey and provide a personalized and a better experience for our patients. During the quarter, we commissioned several medical programs and further strengthened our medical facilities. Uh, FMRI Gurgaon launched state-of-art digital PET CT for advanced imaging in cancer diagnostic. We are getting ready for our MR Linac, which is 
going to be the first of its kind in northern India. Uh, we have further augmented our medical infrastructure by commissioning high-value medical equipment, noticeably LINAC, cath lab, neuro navigation system, and ortho robots in our key facilities. Commiserating with our medical program extension, we continue to attract high-quality clinical talent. We have onboarded clinicians in the specialty of oncology, renal sciences, neurosciences, cardiology, and general surgery during this quarter. With that, I would like to conclude my remarks by reiterating to all of you that we remain steadfastly committed towards our growth path in order to further our operational performance and create long-term value for all our stakeholders. Thank you, and now I would like to hand over to Mr. Anurag Kalra for taking the session further. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, we shall now open the floor for question and answers. Can I request the moderator to begin, please? Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Sayan Mukherjee from Nomura. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good evening, and thanks for taking my question. Uh, so, hospitals, you know, if I look at uh, this quarter and also for the half year, you know, uh, you've recorded 12, 13% growth, but that has not translated into appropriate EBITDA growth. I mean, we have seen margin expansion of around 20 basis point year on year this quarter. Uh, you know, this is after our cut road uh, divestment. So, I mean, and we have, you know, there's a strong RCOP growth, the specialties that you're focusing are growing. Uh, but it seems that EBITDA growth is not coming through. Is there anything that's sort of hurting EBITDA, and how confident are we to sort of achieve 20%, uh, you know, EBITDA for the hospital for the next uh, financial year? Yeah, sure. I can take this question, uh, Karen. So this is uh, uh, your observation is to some extent is correct in terms of EBITDA margin, but in absolute term, if you see the EBITDA in absolute term has gone up as compared to uh, corresponding to the previous year, the EBITDA has gone up by almost 30 crore. Okay, and uh, as regard, you know, the uh, despite you know the Arcot Road uh, divestment, there is uh, no uh, much visibility in the EBITDA margin improvement. Uh, the, there are two couple of reasons for that. One is of course the legal and the professional cost. As you know, companies engaged into this legal battle, and uh, there is uh, uh, some amount of work has uh, happened during this period and because of that there, the legal and professional charges has gone up uh, uh, to some extent and plus you know the revenue uh, uh, increase is uh, mainly coming from the uh, high end specialty like Conco and uh, Ortho which is uh, typically a low margin uh, business. So that is leads to you know not much expansion in the margin. Uh, but overall, in absolute term, the margin has gone. And so, we are uh, are we so are we uh, sticking with our guidance of 20% for next fiscal? Absolutely, Sam. Uh, yeah, you know there are uh, uh, several reasons why the uh, the ma margin has been at this level, but uh, our guidance is absolutely intact for next year. Okay. And uh, I don't know, sir, if you uh, can talk about diagnostics, but, you know, the observation is that the growth and margins there are also, you know, uh, weak versus, let's say, other peers in the industry. Will you be able to comment on any reason why, uh, you know, the growth is lower? Uh, no, Sayan, I'm sorry. As we said in the beginning of the call, we can make no remarks about the diagnostic business, please. Okay, sir. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Madhav Marda from FIL. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good evening. Thank you so much for your time once again. Uh, I just I had two questions. The first one was uh, when you all said that we have evaluated new opportunities at Mohali and Shadimar Wang. Uh, 
does that mean these are additional brownfield uh, expansion opportunities? And would that also mean that uh, the 1400 bed brownfield pipeline, which we spoke about uh, earlier, does that mean we have a bigger brownfield pipeline now available for the company in the next sort of three to four years as we expand? Yes, absolutely. As I said earlier, uh, Madhav, uh, we uh, these are in addition to the earlier brownfield which we have already said, um, uh, and these are both brownfield uh, expansions. Shalimar Bag is, of course, uh, the the new block is going to be uh, constructed, uh, and we are in the stage of getting all the final permissions. Uh, all the plans are ready for that. And similarly, in Mohali also, we are in the process of uh, getting all the permissions. But this, these would be addition to the 1400 beds which we have said earlier. So, uh, what does that make our brownfield pipeline now? That 1400 beds which we had uh, kind of um, uh, highlighted. That number is how much now uh, in terms of uh, for the company? It will be it will be around 1800 beds now. Okay, okay, wonderful for that. And just the second question was uh, to Sai's point about the 20% margin guidance. Uh, what are the levers that can help us get there uh, in in FI25, like what is uh, the current condition? Yeah, so there are a couple of uh, levers we are continuously working on. That one is, of course, you know, the occupancy ramp up. As you can see in the current quarter also, the <coughs> occupancy wise we are uh, still uh, not reached 70% occupancy level. So we want to achieve that 70 percent occupancy level on the enhanced uh, bed capacity, and that will lead to increase in the EBITDA margin. And secondly, you know there is a uh, uh, more focus on the cost side, which should lead to you know some margin improvement uh, in the coming uh, year. So the, these downfield beds, uh, which are which will be coming to 50 beds this year and some more next year. Uh, typically, uh, what is the break-even? Like, I'm assuming given it's a pure brownfield and they're adding in facilities with good occupancy, uh, it would have break-even and this thing should be much faster. Is that the right understanding? Yes, absolutely, and that's why we are focusing uh, more on the brownfield uh, expansion. And your uh, your assessment is absolutely correct because all these expenses are coming in the facilities where occupancy level is is already very high. So we uh, we are not uh, uh, expecting some uh, much challenge in filling those bags, and that will lead to you know the uh, 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 earlier break even point. Got it. Got it. Um, and sir, could you just uh, just highlight like this additional legal and professional cost which went up this quarter? How much was that amount? It is uh, uh, in I think in the range of uh, six to seven crore in the quarter. Or uh, incremental cost. You uh, just found it. Yeah. For the half year, it is around. And this should come down, or uh, this should stay at the same level? Like, or we expect it to come down a bit? It is very difficult to predict uh, the variance because it will all depend on how how quick this uh, quick uh, court proceeding happen, and you know how much time this lawyer will. Be. Invest into that. Okay, okay, thank you. Madam, does that answer your question? Oh uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Neha Manpuria from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. Uh, so, on uh, first the Delhi High Court, uh, do we have any update there, or you know, any timelines when we can look at uh, you know that uh, you know a closure to that uh, litigation and the forensic audit? So the hearings are going on there, uh, but uh, there is no um, um, sort of you know we cannot really predict how much time it will take. There are a couple of dates which have been given during the month of November. Um, mm -hmm. I uh, believe that we should have some clarity after these two dates, but then uh, possibly the winter vacations will come. So I expect that it should take at least three, four months before an absolute clarity emerges. Understood, sir. Uh, and my second question is again on the hospital margin. You know, uh, the 20% margin guidance that that you know we're still playing. 
uh, while I understand occupancy and all of the reasons that you mentioned, uh, but, you know, how essentially are we getting to that number, you know, the higher occupancy? Because we're also adding, um, you know, brownfield beds uh, while the, you know, break-even time might be shorter. There is still some amount of, um, you know, ramp-up that will be required. So, you know, how exactly are we getting in, getting to that 30% margins, especially with the beds that we're adding, even if they're bound brownfield beds? Yeah, so uh, Neha, as we have mentioned earlier, we are quite confident that uh, uh, next year onward we will be having 20% EBITDA margin on a yearly basis. Okay, so uh, so this year uh, there is uh, some improvement in the margin, but the improvement may be higher if we able to uh, you know achieve uh, uh, reduce this uh, uh, this legal cost. So uh, I think uh, uh, next year we are quite uh, hopeful because of the, the reason I have told you. One is, uh, you know, the ramp up of the existing uh, occupancy. As regard your question on, uh, you know, the brownfield expansion and the, uh, and the initial uh, uh, losses, uh, we are not uh, feeling that type of hit in the wherever we, we, we could have achieved the brownfield expansion. Uh, reason being, uh, these are uh, uh, our existing hospital and they are already facing a uh, bad uh, uh, challenge actually. Most of them are operating at 75% plus occupancy. So, uh, I will say uh, they will start contributing uh, very early uh, as we start this project. Yeah, and just to add to that is that couple of hospitals where the occupancy figures are low, is uh, Bangalore and uh, our BG Road in Bangalore and uh, Mulund in Mumbai. Uh, so we are focusing on, uh, you know, enhancing the clinical programs, etc. in these two places. Uh, that is one of the ways by how we will be able to increase the occupancy. And then as Vivek said, that in some of the other hospitals, uh, uh, already they are working at a good occupancy of 70 plus or 75 plus rather. Got it, sir. And so, uh, you know, uh, in terms of uh, capital allocation, uh, you know, uh, strategy, uh, incrementally are we, you know, looking more at more assets, uh, you know, for bolt-on like the, uh, you know, Manisar uh, asset that we uh, took over? Um, or, or, you know, do you think this 1800 is what uh, we are okay with and, you know, we'd want to execute on that before uh, looking at more uh, addition? Yeah, they are, so, see, as we said that, you know, that this is our preferred way of growing, but then mm -hmm. uh, this is our aspiration is much beyond this. Uh, the as we were talking about our balance sheet status and and the debt uh, position, uh, we are mm -hmm. uh, not leveraged at all. So we have a huge capacity. Plus, most of the capex which is going to come for the uh, brownfield expansion, 50% of it is from internal accruals, and only 50% is on debt. So. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the, so this uh, uh, would mean that uh, we would have a further capacity to uh, do smaller projects like the bolt-on which we did in Manesar. 1,800 beds also, mind you, does not include the Manesar beds. Manesar yeah, will yeah. have 350 beds. Over the next two and a half, three years, we will commission them. And uh, we will be starting with 150 beds sometimes in... Uh, by the end of this financial year, uh, mm -hmm. 150 beds we will commission, and then the rest will be commissioned in, in phases. Uh, so it actually makes the brownfield plus uh, um, uh, Meteor put together uh, itself, it becomes uh, close to about 2,300, uh, 2,200, sorry. Uh, and uh, then uh, we will continuously look for other opportunities as well. And we believe that uh, we are uh, in in a position to consider some larger uh, assets as well. And these would be in in the existing markets that we are still, uh, meaning you know Delhi, Mumbai, um, you know those would be the markets you are. Uh, are we also open because historically we you know we moved out of tier, a lot of tier two markets. 
uh, which, you know, seems to be growing much faster than tier one. Um, so, you know, are we still focused on our existing market from a growth strategy point of view? Yes, we will remain focused uh, on the clusters. Our cluster strategy is what we are uh, firmly with, uh, and we will continue uh, with that approach. Understood. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anish Devra from Nomura. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. So my question is around ALOS numbers. So if I look at the ALOS numbers, uh, yeah, you know, till the last quarter, they were in the range of 3.5, 3.6 odd days. But in this quarter, uh, I think uh, all the historical numbers have also been, you know, revised upwards to 4.2 days and uh, something like that. So, could you just, uh, uh, you know, tell what has exactly happened? Has there been any, you know, change in the methodology or what exactly has happened there? The last number uh, Yes, yeah, so uh, essentially, uh, you know, some, uh, I think we will have to get back to you specifically uh, on can, this. I can attend. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, Anif, uh, this ELOS number is basically the way we were calculating earlier and the way now we are calculating. We have recently implemented a IT tool, GI tool for our data analysis and MIS purpose and analysis purpose. In that, we have tried to standardize our, uh, you know, the way we were reporting LOS. So, you know, some uh, some units were taking uh, daycare, some were not taking daycare, those type of things were happening. And because of that, this number uh, deviation is there. There is no change as such in the, um, uh, you know, the business metric aspect. But the way it was calculated, that's why there is a uh, difference. Now, the, this thing is standardized. And uh, going forward, we should track according to this metric, the number which is coming now. Understand, understand. So, so uh, essentially, if I look at the ALOS numbers of uh, this quarter versus the uh, quarter of the last year, there has been a reduction of about 5% in the ALOS the, on the new methodology that you have put out in the in this quarter. So, just wanted to understand what is, uh, you know, driving the ALOS uh, reduction. Yeah, one is, you know, our uh, oncology uh, work is, is going up uh, and especially the medical oncology that has been growing at a very fast pace. Uh, similarly, the cardiology also has done well. Uh, so both these typically have lower uh, average length of stay. Okay, and uh, uh, do we uh, is there a particular focus on uh, reducing the A loss further? Uh, any particular focus there? So the uh, the hospitals which work on high occupancy, we always strive to achieve uh, lower and lower ARPOP, uh, and even in the hospitals, uh, it, it does not make sense for a patient to be in the hospital if they don't need to be. But uh, uh, the nature of the work we do is a lot of quaternary work, high-end neurosurgeries, orthopedic surgeries, etc. So though, though the orthopedic surgery and other areas, the length of stay is not long, but in case of complex neuro procedures, it is typically uh, much longer. Uh, so I think being a, at a at a blended basis, we don't expect it to dramatically come down from the current level. Understood. Thanks. Sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dara Patwa from Smith Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. One question, just one question. In the last call, you guided for 70 plus occupancy for S524. So, are we still maintaining that guidance? And if yes, then it means that Q2 would be much better. H2 would be much better than H1. And we need to have occupancy of 75% in the next two quarters to achieve that 70% occupancy. Yeah, so that was, uh, we were talking about the exit uh, occupancy. And uh, uh, this quarter, uh, the occupancy level should be higher, but uh, we should be mindful about um, this quarter means the running quarter, uh, December quarter. But there is a you know festival season as we know, and uh, they, uh, which generally lead to you know lower occupancy in uh, certain parts of the month. But our target is seventy percent. 
Okay, that is it. That's it's a question. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sham Srinivasan from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, and thank you for taking my question, uh, Doctor. It was just a question on HR, human resources, uh, doctors. Uh, so we have onboarded many clinicians uh, in different medical specialties. I think we have been doing it in the first half as well. And one of your peers earlier today also mentioned that the guaranteed payouts for their uh, doctors, they are trying to get more people on guaranteed payouts. So um, is this the time when, you know, costs are now starting to go up on uh, medical personnel and maybe also non-medical personnel? Uh, and is this one of the risks uh, that could potentially put a question mark around our next year's margin number? What do we think is the biggest risk uh, for for achieving, say, a 20% EBITDA damage? Yeah. So currently, the situation is, Sham, that uh, there are new beds and the new uh, facilities which are coming up in many parts of the country. So we do expect that there will be some movement of clinicians across various networks, etc., which happens from time to time. Uh, and as a result of that, definitely some of the guaranteed payments or the minimum guarantees which we offer, uh, that would also uh, go upwards. But I do not see this as a very high-risk uh, situation, uh, nor is it a very concerning situation. Uh, for the simple reason that the availability of talent is also slightly different now compared to what it used to be a few years back. Uh, and uh, and the larger groups, and not only us, but I would say the others as well, uh, find it easier to attract uh, clinical talent. So, yes, we would definitely see a little bit of churn in coming, uh, in coming times. Uh, but I don't see this as a risk. Now, if I to think that uh, what other risks could happen, uh, that could be partly because some delays may happen in commissioning of some of the beds which uh, we have, uh, uh, which which are getting ready. Uh, so that could be the only risk in my mind, uh, which could delay some of the progress which we are expecting in the next year. Other than that, I think uh, the, all other factors are operational and cyclical in nature, and those can be very easily managed. Got it. So when I look at your uh, professional charges to doctors, so would that be a way to kind of gauge what's happening on that particular line item, especially on doctor compensation? Would that give me the full picture, or is it, it could also be in, say, employee benefits? So how should we track that? wage inflation, especially for doctors? Yeah, so uh, our doctor cost uh, typically is slightly higher. Uh, that is partly because our facility sizes are uh, slightly smaller compared to a larger hospital, so uh, we probably don't have that kind of productivity because of that. Uh, but I think uh, we should not... Uh, uh, factor a very large uh, increase in this cost. I think the majority of the cost enhancement which had to happen has already happened during this year. What is helpful? Currency is, is, is the kind of a baseline for new baseline, yeah. Right. My last question is on the margin matrix uh, which you give on slide seven. Um, uh, so just if you can look at it and say in fiscal 25, how will this the uh, sir, sorry to interrupt, but the line for you is breaking up in between. You are not clearly audible. Yeah. 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 Sir, I'm audible now? Uh, sir, I would. Okay. Yes. Please go ahead. Yeah. So I'm just looking at the margin matrix that you put out for the individual hospitals, and I'm just trying to project hypothetically how this margin matrix will look in fiscal 25. When we look at the four cohorts that you have, will they all be like occupancy is the one number and the last column that will all go up to say, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming everything doesn't go to 70, 
but would that be the driver and I, I know i'm repeating this question other participants asked but just want to figure out how which of these columns is the one that's more important uh, or is there an element of pair mix that we are not talking about yet so if i can answer that uh, so it is a mixture of both in some units it is a, a, a question of better utilization of the facility and the man, uh, you know the uh, the manpower because the occupancy low we have discussed about uh, mulon vg road to some extent vasi fall in that category okay and there are other hospitals where you know uh, uh, where we have uh, uh, expansion going on for example the uh, faridabad and noida where you know the expansion is going on faridabad we will be completing the extension by this uh, um, time so then you know one the uh, disturbance because of the expansion will go away and that will lead to the uh, uh, to the better patient experience and better better revenue and second is the more bed will be coming and faridabad by the way we are operating at almost 80% plus occupancy level so uh, so those type of thing will play it will not be a, a straight answer i will uh, say to this uh, but having said that most of the hospital uh, 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 bearing you know four five which we have we discuss every time are uh, should be moving above uh, 15% ebitda margin category yeah, just to add to your second part of the question as to you know whether the pair mix uh, uh is uh, something uh, so pair mix wise i think we have uh, uh, approximately about 20%, 20% of uh, around 20% of the scheme uh, patients uh, which is the cdhs cchs etc we are doing uh, so we do aim to try and reduce that uh but we want to do it in a calibrated manner because it is also important for us to ensure that the occupancy remains high uh so that will go in tandem uh, so some some of the units we will accept a higher proportion of these patients and some of the units we will not accept such patients coordinator thank you and all the best thank you The next question is from the line of Naman Bansali from Perpetuity Ventures. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, first question is on the oncology side. So you had mentioned this, and in the previous call too, that onco is a lower margin business for you. But I was just wondering from the industry-wide perspective and majorly from the northern region perspective, that there are a lot of different hospital players who are trying to more and more enter into the oncology therapy as a uh, Uh, to the patients so there are certain peers who are reporting uh, certain numbers which are incrementally giving them uh, north of 35% margins on their oncology business and there are certain peers who are trying to enter into oncology business incrementally because it is a higher margin business and these are not present totally into delhi and ki but noida greater noida etc it is just want to understand that why from an industry perspective is oncology a higher margin or a lower margin business for us No, no. Oncology is not a low margin business, but when we look at the oncology business in totality, uh, it is important to understand that if an institution's contribution from medical oncology is slightly higher, uh, then the contribution margin becomes lower, and as a result of that, in the percentage terms, it may not be as high. as a institution which is doing more of surgical work or an equal proportion of surgical versus uh, medical oncology uh, so the reason why in medical oncology the contribution margins are lower is because the price of drugs is higher and the service charges are also low so that is precisely the re- uh, the point we, which we were trying to make we strongly believe that oncology is a growth area we have seen a growth of about almost close to uh, 27% i think uh, in in our oncology uh, yeah 27% area. and we have committed a huge uh, capex to enhance our oncology services in in the entire region we also strongly believe that oncology is 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 the business of future uh, but in absolute terms though we would have a high 
more a bit of being generated but in terms of profitability uh, i do not believe that it can go on uh, on a very high uh, percentage uh, because of the reasons i mentioned but one thing which we are doing is we are enhancing our surgical oncology load as that keeps on building uh, we will see a better margin from this segment got it got it i understand uh and as you said you are trying to increase the surgical mix so as a overall business we usually see that q2 is a lower surgical revenue business for us so going forward uh we maintain our aim to keep the surgical mix above a north of 60% or uh, would it fluctuate lower than 60% yeah uh, uh, the some bit of seasonal vari- variations happen and also you know sometimes we don't have a choice how this is uh, a kind of a number in hindsight you know the, we cannot really choose which patients uh, get sick at what time uh, so because of that what we typically will see is difficult to predict uh, but i expect the ratios to remain similar got it sir and lastly uh, we usually mention about rationalizing our portfolio in terms of the hospitals which are performing good and uh, which are performing bad so uh, today if you would have to say what are what would be the top hospitals which have been underperforming since last couple of years and are on the uh, uh, pecking order on the top for rationalization yeah so yeah so yeah so uh, we, uh, this is a continuous process uh, and uh, uh, you know as uh, uh, we are giving this metrics uh, so we continuously evaluate and our first endeavor is uh, you know to uh, uh, make the hospital more profitable and uh, uh, after exhausting all the uh, our resources and if we feel that we are not able to add value then only we try to rationalize by divesting divesting those uh, assets currently uh, uh, we have done one uh, as you are aware arcor road we have divested we are working a couple of more uh, uh, and uh, uh, you know uh, as things progress we will able to tell you more about that okay so got it and lastly on the occupancy side so uh, if we are seeing we are going to add another 250 beds by the second half of the year and Uh, so are we aiming that 70% plus occupancy can we see that number in the second half despite the 250 bed addition what, what would be your uh, take on it yeah this year we will be having exit up uh, with 70% occupancy the overall occupancy for the year may not be 70% it may be slightly lower but next year we are uh, uh, we are hoping of 70% on year on year Good, good. Thanks a lot, sir. Happy Diwali. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bino Pati Parampil from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Hi. Good evening. Um, so actually, just a request. You know, we are adding eighteen uh, hundred beds uh, on a base of about four thousand or forty five hundred, which is a large number. <clears throat> would be great if you give a little more color in your press release or investor presentation about uh, where these bets are coming up and uh, you know a rough timeline in terms of which year each uh, each group of bets come up uh, that would be great and help us understand more certainly we can directly share with you you can connect uh, with uh, anurag kalra and uh, he, we, our team will be happy to uh, give you the further details perfect thank you very much thank you the next question is from the line of madhav marda from fil please go ahead yeah thank you for the follow up i just wanted to check on on the brownfield expansion uh, when 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 these beds come in basically is how much is incremental with the margin on these beds you know given some of the fixed costs are already in place um i don't want to the exact number but it could give us some qualitative or broad sense that would be very helpful to understand the kind of operating that this should come from yeah obviously the ebitda margin of uh, uh, this brownfield expansion will be higher as you rightly mentioned the fixed cost will be allocated on the higher uh, larger base 
having said that the basic uh, uh, there will be some cost which will go directly with the uh, with the occupancy that will anyway go away go uh, go away so i am expecting a uh, beta margin of uh, at least 30 35% on the uh, on this revenue uh, brown collection sir got it because it is the ask is for for photos um on 4000 bed 1800 bed is like a very large number for brown field right so it's like a fair, i mean it should drive like from a 3 5 5 year view maybe margin should be quite well supported right because it's a mix of brown field that is very large in our existing yeah yeah once once we achieve a particular ramp up uh, on this uh, 1800 bed definitely it should give us a uh, higher beta Okay. Amit sir, thank you so much. Happy Diwali. Thank you. Good. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sayan Mukherjee from Nomura. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. <coughs> Thanks for the follow-up. Uh, so this 12-13 percent offline growth in hospitals. Uh, can you uh, split it up between volume growth and realization per patient? And within realization per patient. which is an important driver whether it is pricing of the procedures or case mix and payer mix if you can you know sort of uh, you know give some granular detail around the growth profile yeah so i will say it is around the price increase uh, increase of around 3% uh, uh, and and uh, uh, 7 to 8% is uh, on account of volume increase and rest is on the uh, specialty and you know the mix impact and this 3% price increase is it like a normal trend because sort of this is below inflation right and uh, i mean all your cost items would be sort of uh, inflating at a higher rate yeah you are right uh, so this is uh, basically on the overall revenue and as you know we are having uh, government payer also skin uh, tpa patient also we are you know we, we don't have liberty to increase price uh, uh, like that and plus you know there are a major co portion of drugs and consumables on the derivative price control so uh, i will say uh, in the this may be in line of with the industry norm okay i mean uh, so there is no a sort of increase in pricing right i mean like one of your peers are mentioning that uh, you know there is greater demand for let's say private rooms or people are willing to spend more so is that not a lever for you to sort of uh, drive uh, pricing no no that may, that will go into the arp of that is you know will come into the mix when we say price uh, means for for the same bed what price we were charging at here And for the same procedure, what price we were charging earlier, and what price we have increased. Suppose somebody uh, earlier wanted uh, uh, double bed, and now he he wanted single bed. That will go in the mix. Okay. And uh, so this uh, trend is something which you fact, you know, you know, this is something which you think would sustain. I mean, for next year, seven eight percent volume growth and three percent price increase. Yes, yes, we are expecting the same. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have no further questions. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Owen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us on the call at this late hour. If there are any further queries, clarifications, uh, please do feel free to reach out to us, and we'll be able to help you as best possible. Thank you, and uh, uh, good night. Thank you. On behalf of Fortis Healthcare, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.